Hi, it's Karatex here with a video that revisits the testing issues that I had with Python in Chapter 8 of Building Linux from Scratch 10.1. So what I decided to do is to have a look to see if it was either the host operating system or the um, Truit environment that was causing problems with the testing. Um, now, if this does pass, it could be either of those, but it, it's probably more likely to be with the Truit environment. Um, and I say that because there are several packages, or there have been several packages in the Beyond Linux from Scratch book, where it says that certain tests of, or tests of certain packages fail within a Truit environment. Um, added to that the fact that the cross compile should completely divorce or almost completely divorce the Linux from scratch system from the host system I'm, I suspect that if this does work that it would be the true environment if it doesn't work then obviously there's um, an issue with building Python that's um, maybe not dealt with in the book there's a slim chance it could be something in the kernel but I don't think that's very likely so, um, so yeah, like I said, what I'm going to do is to recompile it, retest it, and see what happens. And as you can see, I've booted up the Linux from scratch system that um, I've built, the 10.1 version. So again, I'm just going to check the Linux from scratch release file, 10.1, so it's the correct one. Um, and also thought this is a good opportunity to demonstrate how to um, use links and the GPM copy and paste now that we've installed them to build any package basically. So I need to first of all go into sources. Um, so that's ready there to build. I'm going to go open another virtual terminal with Alt F2. Log in here and I'm going to run links with the Linux from scratch.org website and that's taken us to the home page. Just press the down arrow to go to the Linux from scratch part and again the down arrow to go to read online and once more the down arrow to go to read the stable LFS book and there's the uh, contents page. So I need to go to section or chapter 8 and look for Python. I could do a search with forward slash, but know roughly where it is. There it is there. Press enter on that, and there's the installation instructions for Python. So I go back to my building terminal, and I'm going to do tar minus xvf Python to extract the package. And change into the directory. So as you can see I've got network access, I haven't turned it off like I did in the building of chapter 8. Um, if you remember there's two issues, there was two errors that came up that were unexpected plus there was the fact that the last t test was hanging, it hang for 10 or hung for 10 minutes before I decided to abort it and it wasn't until I disabled the network and rerun the test that it seemed to fix that particular issue but there's still two errors so I'm going to see if testing will, will fix both those problems the two errors that came up I hope they won't reappear and the last test hanging so back to F2 so yeah I'm in the uh, Python directory the source directory ready to build so back to the second virtual terminal I'm going to copy this configure command when you copy these if um, I copy it like that with whole lines highlighted. What this last line will do is it will include the carriage return at the end. Um, normally you wouldn't want that because when you paste this you, you'd want to just inspect to make sure that um, what you've pasted in is correct. So you want to paste it in, just double check it's complete, that you haven't missed anything off the beginning for example and then press enter. So you can see that just pasted in the command and did nothing else. If I demonstrate copying that command with the 
whole line you'll see when I paste it this time it will paste it in with the carriage return straight away and it fires off so you, you want to be careful that you don't copy that in um, unless it's a simple command of course like make or something then there's not a lot can go wrong there um, and if you did miss off the first character it wouldn't run anyway it would just be AKE unless you've got a, a binary that's called AKE in the path then um, nothing would happen so that's the configure run. I'll go back to the, the virtual terminal. You can see the next program or the next command to run is make. Now, one thing that we haven't got set is the make flags. If I echo that, we haven't got make flags. So what I'm going to do is to edit the etc profile file. You can see it's got one variable that's been set in there. I'm just going to add another one, which is the make flags equals minus j4 so because I've just edited that profile um, it doesn't mean to say that that make flags been set we've either got log out or another way we can do it is source um, there's two ways of doing this you can either do dot etc profile um, that's not really recommended because if for example you're writing that down or you take a print screen or something the dot is so tiny it can sometimes get missed so the preferred way is to actually type in the word source they both do exactly the same thing um, so now if I do echo make flags you can see that's now set um, we've not had to log out at all we're still in the Python directory so now I can I'll time this run the make command it will run with four threads because make flags are set and just wait a minute or so for this to compile. Okay, so that's built successfully. So if we go back to the second virtual terminal. So the next thing to do is to run the tests. So back to the first one. Again, I'm going to time this, just get an idea of how long it takes. Paste that in and we'll see how this goes this time.
Okay, well, yeah, that's obviously worked. We've got test result success. 403 tests okay. Um, it says 22 tests were skipped. Um, not quite sure why they were skipped, but it looked like some of them to do with Windows. Um, maybe other stuff that's not available in the standard LFS environment. But the key thing is that there are no failures and also the last test didn't hang. It did seem to take a little while longer, but it didn't hang and it obviously passed. So, um, as I said before, um, or suggested at least, that I suspect it's probably the um, truth environment that's caused those problems. So really, because I've got a good test, I need to install this version of Python because I know it's passed. Um, the other one has some unknown or, or yeah, unknown things about it. Was it the tests that were failing themselves or was it the compiled uh, version of Python that was failing and the tests were highlighting that? So because I don't know that, if it is the binaries or just the tests that are failing, I'll reinstall this because I've I can guarantee that the tests um, are telling me that everything's okay. So this this is going to be a um, a higher confidence version of Python to install. Okay, that's installed. Um, let's see what else there is. So it's just the documentation by the looks of it. So it probably won't make any difference whether I install this or not. But for completeness, I'll install it. Just rerun the commands again. And that looks like. That is the end of the installation. Yeah, so um, I'll just tidy up and I might as well just run it just to check. It runs. Yep, there it is. So, um, like I say, that that demonstrates that the truit is not always the best environment to build in. Um, uh, it's probably why I've always preferred to, after Linux from scratch, just boot it and struggle with building the initial packages as I showed in the previous video, um, rather than doing it in a true environment because it's it's obviously not identical to running natively, you, and you wouldn't expect it to be anyway because it is a bit of a not a bodge as such, but it's it's um, obviously a, a hack of sorts to to emulate as if it was a native boot into the operating system. So I hope you found that uh, useful and enlightening. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to hear about other videos I produce similar to this. Thanks once again. Goodbye.